Today we're going to look at uh, the defined benefit plan. So the what it does is, for example, uh, sets out um, your benefit in the form of as a percentage of your salary. For example, it will say uh, when you get to retirement, you will get uh, one sixtieth for each year of service. So if you've got ten years of service, you're going to get ten sixtieths. And uh, usually there's a maximum. Uh, it could be. 30, 60 years is your maximum. In other words, you end up with half your salary. So that is how it, uh, it defines the benefits you're eligible to, you'll be eligible to take under the scheme when you get to retirement. Just to look at an example of uh, what uh, a defined benefit scheme can look like, uh, if we specifically look at the gratuity uh, benefit, um, the benefit was actually set up under the Payment of Gratuity Act of 1972. The background to it is that in the olden days, um, the employer would uh, pay a lump sum on when the employee came to retire. And this was crystallized by this particular act of 1972. And what this uh, act mainly says is that if you've got an establishment, if you've got an organization, an employer, who's got 10 or more employees, then you have to provide this benefit. And what is this benefit? This benefit, this benefit is actually defined as 15, day, 15 days of salary for each year of service. Yeah? And you may ask the question, well, what do you mean by salary? And what do you mean by number of years? Uh, when it says, the, the act actually says complete years. So 15 days of salary, or 15 days of wages, for each complete year of service. So the question then is, uh, what is, as I said, what is the definition of salary? And what is the definition of complete year? The, the act actually clarifies this. So if you've done uh, five years and seven months, then clearly that's six years, complete six years. Now the next question is, well, how do you define salary? And again, the Act defines salary. It says that's the normal, but under certain circumstances, it does allow you to take into account uh, something uh, such things as commission. For example, if the commission was specified in the contract, in the contract of employment, and it was available um, at a fixed rate, so it, it said uh, for uh, commission of 5% of your salary for each year, then that is allowed, allowable. So you can actually take that into the formula, you can add it into the formula. And that from the point, employee's point of view, it means that he's going to get a higher benefit because the definition of salary has increased the amount of salary. Um, these, as far as the act is concerned, it also says the employer need not pay more than three and a half lakh. And that doesn't mean that the, if the employer wants to pay more than three and a half lakh, it's, not, it's, it's going to be stopped. So the employer wants to pay full length, that's fine. It just says if the 15 days per year of service leads to three and a half lakh or more, then he doesn't have to pay more than three and a half lakh. By the way, can you guess how many years of service and how much you need to get to this three and a half? Five, five years? Um, if you have a salary of about, uh, uh, let's say, 20,000, and uh, if you have, sorry, uh, yeah, 20 years service and about uh, 30,000, that's going to be enough to cover three and a half lakh. Um, now, as far as funding for it, you know, you know the, in other words, just like any pensions, a pension, this is creating a liability for the employer because he's at the end of the day, he's going to say, when the, the uh, person, when the person comes to retire, I'm going to find this money. So he can do one of two ways. The act actually says that um, you have to. Uh, buy insurance. The employer has to buy insurance uh, to pay for this. Alternatively, you can actually write to the uh, or get in touch with the appropriate department and say that I want to pay it out of my own fund. He can do that. So he can create a fund within the, um, within his company and pay it out of that. As far as the act is concerned, all he wants to do is to ensure that when the employee comes to uh, retirement, the money is available. And in order to do that, he says you must guarantee it through an insurance scheme or you must set up a, your own fund and, uh, and confirm that you have this own fund, and that's allowed. The other thing is um, the Act also mentions nominations. In other words, you can nominate someone to take the benefit. So let's say you die in, in during the course of your service, then you can nominate someone uh, before you die, obviously, to get this benefit. That, that's allowed. And that's, in fact, what it says is um, you will allow, you're allowed to nominate someone from your family, within your family, family in your immediate family. But if you're not married, let's say, um, then you can nominate someone outside the family as well. But only if you haven't got any immediate family. Um, and if you don't, if you fail to nominate anyone, 
then they have to be allowed to go to your parents, to go to the parents of their own. So that's look quick look at the gratuity. Ah. Um, as far as the tax position is concerned, interesting thing is that government employees are fully exempt from any tax payable on the gratuity payment. Uh, whereas the rest of us are concerned, uh, there is an exemption limit, and the exemption limit is the maximum you can pay, as I said, is three and a half. Uh, within that, you can there are tests done, checks done to make sure that's not exceeded. But within that, it says that uh, the actual amount payable, whatever the minimum is of actual amount payable, and this calculation of 15 days per salary. So it's the lowest of those amounts, whatever the, whatever the figure is. Right. If we move on to the next type of benefit, leave salary, uh, we, we're, we're entitled to uh, certain types of leave which we can accumulate. Uh, for example, earned leave or previous leave. Right? So if you don't take it for whatever reason, you, just, you cannot take it during your year, then it can be accumulated. And um, some uh, employers will allow you to take it during the course of your employment. So you can't take it this year, you can take it next year. But some people will, uh, some people will not want to take it, and normally it accumulates to your retirement. Uh, and at the time of retirement, you um, find out how many days leave you're entitled to, and you get paid accordingly. So if you like, this is another type of um, defined benefit, and defined in the sense that you're getting the benefit at retirement, and it's defined in terms of your salary. So it's a defined benefit which you can, you know, accumulate, and you know. Uh, what your expectations are, so on. Um, there are clear-cut definitions within your employment contract of uh, what is the level of salary that's going to be used to calculate your salary, uh, your uh, uh, leave relation, um, and also how many how many days leave you're allowed to complete, because there will normally be a maximum. Yeah, the employer will say you cannot accumulate more than three days per year or four days per year, something like that. So that formula would have to be applied to work out how much you can take at the end of the day. Um, normally, the uh, liability will be paid out of, because this is salary at the end of the day, uh, it will be paid out of the fund, could be paid out of his own funds, or you can, there are companies which will ensure this liability as well. As far as the tax position is concerned, so there is of course always a tax position. Uh, at the end of the day, it's really salary, isn't it? It's really salary. So what the government is saying is that we, but people are uh, looking forward to it on their retirement. So there is some relaxation. relaxation there. Uh, what the government is saying is that um, there will be a test. We can do a test. But the test will be uh, the maximum you're allowed is three lakh. Yeah, just as there was three and a half for gratuity, the maximum is three lakh. And you do three checks. One is for the actual amount you receive. One is the three lakh limit, as I said. Then the other uh, limit is the 10 months, maximum of 10 months. Uh, and, and the alternative check is maximum one year salary for each company year. So just to see what the, that these figures could end up uh, add up looking is just look at an example. Yeah. So we'll look at an example. Let's say this particular case has 50,000 uh, salary, monthly salary. And the period of service is 15 years. So you know those four checks we mentioned. The first check would be um, what, what, what is the employer prepared to pay? Let's say in this particular case, in our example, the employer is prepared to pay for that. Um, as far as check two, which is 10 months salary, 10 times 50 is going to be five thousand. Huh? And then we said uh, um, 15 months here. Yeah. So that's going to be seven and a half for that one. So, uh, and then the maximum of three that. So the minimum there is four, five, seven and a half, three is the minimum is three. So he's entitled to three that without me paying any tax. He can have the four lakh. He's been given the four lakh. He's still getting the four lakh, but of that, out of that, three lakh is not taxable. Okay. Um, again, there are definitions of salary. Um, and the, the salary definition is usually set to the uh, basic plus DA. And the salary is usually averaged over 10 lakhs. I should mention in passing that the government employee is, again, uh, exempt from the income to tax. The third type of benefit we're going to look at, defined benefit, is uh, the employee's pension scheme benefit. Now, this was introduced in 1995, uh, and it replaced the previous scheme, which is the family pension scheme, which was uh, set up in 1971. Uh, obviously, because this is supposed to be a better scheme from that, and what this, this particular scheme, when it came in, the Act said people to um, move over all the members of that particular world, that older scheme into this scheme. And as a result, you moved over all the assets and liabilities from that particular scheme into this new scheme. Uh, and, the, and all the uh, new provident fund members were 
compulsorily required to go into this particular scheme. So what, what are the terms and conditions of this scheme? First of all, let's look at the contributions. Um, as far as the contribution is concerned, the, the employee does not have to contribute anything, which is, which is great. Uh, the employer is required to contribute 8.33% of the salary. Mm -hmm. So that's one element of contribution. The other element of contribution is the government will be paying 1.16 on behalf of all the employees. So that's, that's very interesting because the government is taking part in this scheme. So if you like, it's a, it is partly a, a social service benefit type scheme. Yeah? So what is this benefit in terms of amount of benefit you can expect? Uh, it is expressed, as I mentioned, I remember earlier I gave an example of N68 and all that. So it's slightly in that frame, of frame. and this one will allow you 1 60th, sorry, 1 70th for each year of completed service. And again, there's a maximum, and the maximum is 35 years. So if you do more than 35 years, it's not taken into account. So if you do 40 years, you still get 35 years, years only taken into account. And what that means is 35 by 70 is half. So you're going to get half your salary at the end of the year. Right? So that's what they're aiming for. Um, in terms of definition of salary, it's the last 12 months of your service, averaged over that. Uh, and normally people, as they go through their employment, their salary increases. So that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and bear in mind um, as to uh, the limit. So you actually have to have at least 10 years of service to be able to eligible to take the benefit. And you have, before you can start taking the benefit, you have to be about 58. So two things. One, you have to have completed 10 years of service. Two, you need to be at least 58. Now there is a relaxation in that if you are between 50 and 58, and for whatever reason you say I want to take early, take it early, then that is allowed. The scheme will allow you. But there will be a reduction in the payment. And there is a formula. In fact, there are, there's a set table which works out uh, how much it will be reduced by if you take it earlier than 50 years. Uh, another good thing about this particular benefit is that you're allowed to commute the pension. What that means is instead of taking a monthly amount, you can get a lump sum, and, uh, which is useful, uh, and also it will be tax free. And the limit is one third. However, it's subject to um, if you, if you have taken uh, uh, gratuity, then it's reduced. It's only quarter in that. So if you haven't taken any gratuity payment, then it's one third. If you have taken gratuity, then it's lower, it's quarter. Yeah, so that is uh, something to bear in mind. Now, so what other benefits? We could question. I mean, it's a pretty comprehensive scheme, so there are other benefits involved. So let's say the person who's entitled to it dies, then the scheme says pension will continue to his. Uh, uh, it of course works the other way as well. So if it's uh, a, a lady uh, who's got this key uh, pension, then they do continue to uh, As far as the children are concerned, as well, it will be payable to the children until they reach their 25th birthday. However, if that child is disabled for a lot of reason, then the scheme is pretty generous in that in which will let, let this, the payment continue throughout the lifetime of that little child, even into adulthood. Yep. Uh, again, the question of nomination arises, and nomination is accepted. Um, if married, then someone within the family will be nominated. Um, if there are no nominees, then no one is nominated, then it will automatically, the scheme will automatically pay to the parents. Okay, so we can stop there, but I do have an example which I would like to take you through of gratuity calculation. Um, but before that, do you have any questions? So th these are particularly um, important benefits which every um, individual can look forward to. So as you mentioned, there's a 8.33 percent contribution by the employer. Uh, so this contribution on the monthly basis or on the annual basis? Uh, it's regular. Or monthly yeah. basis. Yeah. Uh, 8.33 percent of the basic salary or the total salary? Oh. It's defined as basic and minimum. Just basically, not the year or the year comes. Well, in this particular case, it's, it's basic maybe. Right. Um, as far as uh, the gratuity pay uh, calculation is concerned, shall we go through that quickly? Okay. Let's have an example of three lakhs. Three lakhs. Uh, and let's say 
He is salary, he was, sorry, he was in service between the 1st of January 1990 and 31st of July 1999. So therefore, his month, if his annual salary is 3 lakh, the monthly salary is 25,000. Okay. Uh, and years of service would be, because it's uh, 1 January 1990 to 31st July, 9 years and 7 months. Um, if we do the calculation, uh, to work out the daily daily rate, because don't forget we're trying to work out 15 days salary. In order to work out the daily rate, the formula is uh, 25,000 divided by 26. Why 26? You can ask. 26, uh, 26 days are calculated. Ah, as because there are four. Because four Sundays. Are That's right. So whatever this uh, monthly amount is divided by 26, not 30. So 25 divided by 25,000 by 26 is 961.54, uh, which. Uh, then multiplied by uh, 15, and then the number of years gives us 144231. So that's the answer. So that would be the way of you calculating your math.